One Sunday afternoon, I was casually scrolling through TikTok, as heathens do, when I was served this video. I got a bit of bad news for you, some bad outer space news that's kind of important. This week, China launched a rocket for its space station, and that went great. The rocket is successfully in orbit. But the launcher, which is the size of a 10-story building, accidentally also went into orbit and is um, descending back to Earth. And no one knows where it's going to crash or what it's going to crash into. Horrified, I followed the old Russian proverb, trust but verify. Though my pronunciation may give you difficulty, the maxim is dovayai no provayai. Trust, but verify. <laughs> you repeat that at every meeting. As it turns out, random internet stranger man is mostly correct. The Chinese National Space Agency, according to all the reports I saw, had fired a Long March 5B rocket into space last week, did successfully deliver its payload. The core of the rocket, this thing over here, was meant to fall back to Earth. Instead, it did in fact go into orbit. The rocket core is spent. There's no way of changing its orbit. It's effectively just a very large piece of metal floating in space now. Currently, this huge lump of metal is around 300 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, and it's traveling at around 28,000 kilometers an hour. At this speed and height, it completes an orbit every 90 minutes. And basically, this thing is staying up there until gravity and the atmosphere bring it down. As it continues to lose altitude, it will eventually dip into the atmosphere at which point drag will become so much that it will quickly bring it down and the friction at that point from the air will turn it into a fiery mess. Most objects that go through this extreme event break up with much of the debris melting away. Now, yes, this thing was designed for re-entry, but not in this way. So it is highly likely that it's gonna break up. But the concern is that because of the size of this object, as he said, it's one of the biggest in our lifetime, this increases the likelihood that something sizable will make it to the ground. The best guess for when is sometime before May 10th. The latest reports are putting it at May 8th going into May 9th. The where is currently impossible to tell and it will be until it enters the atmosphere. This is largely because of the pace that it's traveling and the unpredictability, the uncontrolled nature of it means that as it hits the atmosphere, it could shoot off in a different direction. And at that speed and that height, even a small variation can change the calculation dramatically, change the trajectory dramatically. So you might have had an impact site at one location and then with one degree change, you will have an impact site thousands of kilometers away. When it finally does come down, there won't be a lot of time for warnings, if warnings are necessary. And yeah, it's just completely unpredictable. And if you're freaked out and you'd like to obsessively check up on it, you can use this website. After learning all of this, I had visions of Armageddon or Deep Impact um, and doing a little bit more research, I rediscovered the footage of that Russian meteor back in 2013. That thing exploded in the atmosphere with the force of a nuclear weapon. So that didn't help with my freaking out. And the, the early draft of the script had me examining yields of nuclear weapons and I was speculating about the strength of the material used in the Long March rocket. But I quickly realized that I'm not a rocket surgeon or whatever, and I have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. So I took a breath and I decided what the hell, and I reached out to the expert many of the articles were quoting on Twitter, and I asked him, you know, what's the worst case? What are we looking at? And God bless the internet, he replied. And he gave me this quick response, which I think succinctly puts things into perspective. No, this object has a lot less energy than a meteor and loses most of it during re-entry. Worst case is like a small plane crash. Now, don't get me wrong, being around something that is the equivalent of a plane crash won't be fun, but this plane crash is a highly unlikely worst case scenario. To harm anyone, this rocket core, or at least a sizable chunk of it, would need to, one, survive re-entry. This is not a given. There's a high probability that it's gonna break up significantly in the atmosphere and be melted away. Two, that piece of metal that's gone through this extreme event has to hit land instead of the sea, which, you know, two thirds of the surface of the earth is covered in water. It's more likely to hit sea than hit land. Three, that land would have to be inhabited and around 60%, depending on what metrics you use of land is uninhabited. And finally, if it did hit an inhabited piece of land, it would then need to hit a person or something else that would like, you know, explode and cause secondary damage that then hurts a person. And yeah, in the history, 70 years of space travel, 
no one has died from being hit by falling space debris. In fact, the chances are pretty high that no one will even see this thing coming back, let alone be hurt or killed by it. And if you're not convinced by that, you know, dubious explanation, there are historical precedents for this. A similar scenario has actually played out before. Just about a year ago, an earlier Long March 5B rocket made a chaotic re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, with pieces of it falling onto the west coast of Africa. Some of the debris also fell onto two villages in Cote d'Ivoire, causing damage to people's businesses and homes. But again, no injuries or fatalities were reported. Yeah, that's right. This isn't even the first time the CNSA has lost one of these rockets. I don't know if this helps to make you feel safer or not, but this kind of uncontrolled re-entry is not unheard of. Just about a month ago, one of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets was seen shooting through the night sky above the Pacific Northwest. This was also an uncontrolled re-entry. Look at that thing go. So once again, highly, highly unlikely that you, anyone you know, or in fact anyone on the face of the planet will be hurt or killed by this rocket's uncontrolled re-entry and return to Earth. But the pessimist in me has to point out that low probability isn't no probability. And in the years to come, the pace of launches into orbit is set to increase dramatically. And with that, uncontrolled re-entries will probably become still more common. So the odds of something going awry, some kind of catastrophe happening, are nudged just a little bit higher. For example, the CNSA has set itself the goal of completing its space station by the end of 2022. And to meet this objective, no less than 12 launches of Long March rockets are scheduled. Given that these things have a lead time of years and that mistakes can't easily be corrected quickly, I'd have to say that there'll be a few more uncontrolled re-entries related to this program. Let's also note that the CNSA has as yet not explained how the current debacle occurred, which is always a good sign. But enough picking on China, mistakes happen all the time with these launches, regardless of the agency or company behind them. It's hard to know for sure, launches get scrubbed all the time and budgets get cut, but the 2020s could be the busiest decade for orbital launches since the 1970s. Hell, it might be the busiest since spaceflight began. And yeah, I love this. I'm a big fan of space exploration. I want to see lots more things in space, but all it would take to destroy these programs and dreams for future exploration and development is to have a rocket-sized piece of man-made spacecraft smash into a children's hospital or some kind of orphanage or you know, God forbid, something important like an oil rig or nuclear power station to very quickly turn public opinion against space travel. Now again, highly unlikely, like one in a billion chance of that happening. But I do think that it'd be really, really cool if the policy towards uncontrolled re-entries wasn't apparently meh. So yeah, I finish off there. I need to get this video out before this thing comes down. What do you think? Are you at all worried about this rocket? Are you worried about future uncontrolled entries? Can anything be done, do you think, to stop this happening in the future? And as always, if I got something terribly, terribly wrong, please let me know. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. And yeah, it would be great if you could, you know, like and subscribe. It helps me, it encourages me, it lets me know I'm on the right track. Thank you, bye-bye.